This leaflet has been making the rounds in the Stockport area recently, and it's very interesting. At a glance it looks like a nice attempt by Stockport Council to alleviate the concerns of local residents who always seem to be up in arms whenever a new cell tower is installed, despite using said cell tower on a daily basis to moan about it on Facebook. Looking closer however, reveals a sinister side to these leaflets, which I thought we'd look at before going into the purpose of today's video. Firstly on the front, we can see a cell tower superimposed outside this pub. Now, there is a cell tower here, but it's not the one in this photoshopped collage. You'll also note the so-called chemtrail that's been added above, probably to further wind up the conspiracy nuts. This has been superimposed too, because as you can see, the clouds are pixelated, but this aircraft and its water vapour contrail are crisp. At the bottom is an approved by Stockport Council logo. I've spoken to Stockport Council and this isn't something they've approved or are involved in. On the back we see a couple of sentences that reassure people about the rollout of 5G. It says, the future world is here. Dear resident, we understand that you may have concerns regarding the new digital 5G mast being erected close to your home. Although we cannot stop the rollout, spelt incorrectly, of this new technology, your safety and peace of mind are our top priorities. This leaflet provides important information on the simple precautions that you and your family can take to keep safe from 5G radiation. You'll notice the mixed use of capitals and lowercase so far. 5G stands for the fifth generation of wireless technology. It promises you faster internet speeds and enables unprecedented, spelt wrong, surveillance, also spelt wrong, technologies. Your mast is being installed following strict government guidelines set by the International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, or ICNIRP. At the bottom you'll note it says discounts people with metal implants. Then it goes on to ask, can 5G cause cancer? There's no evidence to show that 5G radiation can cause cancer or that it's harmful to children, pets or the environment. Again at the bottom it says studies are ongoing. Lastly, it goes on to list precautions you can take. Firstly, limit the time you spend near 5G radiation sources to reduce the amount of exposure. Secondly, increase your distance from the 5G radiation source. And thirdly, use shielding such as walls or barriers made from materials like lead or concrete to block or absorb 5G radiation. Finally, the whole thing is topped off with the World Economic Forum, Agenda 2030, United Nations, Government Digital Service and World Health Organization logos. Now, this is printed on card and some expense has gone into making it, but it's a classic example of PSYOPs, a piece of propaganda or type of communication that's aiming to influence a targeted group's way of thinking or decision making. This leaflet does nothing to alleviate people's concerns over 5G, but rather, through the use of those guidelines at the end, get people discussing 5G further, spreading the notion that this technology is dangerous. If the people behind this leaflet were trying to convince people it was safe, then there'd be no need to put shielding guidelines on there. So if you're behind this leaflet, then drop me an email. I've made a couple of videos on 5G before, including one on the fact that it doesn't cause cancer, and many other conditions and illnesses that people believe it does. That video looked at the psychological aspect behind these beliefs, and some of the conspiracies floating around, and a few commented that I didn't go into enough detail on why 5G doesn't cause health problems. So, in this idiot's guide to 5G, I'm going to talk about the frequencies used, why they're harmless in their current configuration, and that's the important point to note here, and the rules that are put in place to maintain this. When I talk about radio towers like this, and them being harmless in their current configuration, it's an identical comparison to something like an electricity pylon. They're harmless in their current configuration. Mobile phone sites transmit nothing more than ordinary radio waves. These radio waves are electromagnetic fields, and unlike ionising radiation such as X-rays or gamma rays, they can neither break chemical bonds in the body, nor cause ionisation in the human body. In the UK, harmless radio waves have been used by a whole range of public and commercial communication networks since the dawn of radio in the 1920s, when the BBC opened its first regular public broadcast station in London. The same radio waves have underpinned the UK's growth,
prosperity and social inclusion. These radio waves have ensured the safety of our communities and supported our national security. Sites such as this support a range of wireless communication services that rely on harmless radio waves, particularly mobile communication base stations that operate in the wider public interest. There's a very good chance you're using these radio waves to watch this video. The health effects of exposure to these kinds of radio waves have been researched extensively over several decades, and many publications can be found in scientific journals and elsewhere. Coordinated research around the world has addressed concerns about the growth of mobile communications technologies from around the year 2000. 24 years later, through extensive studies providing peer-reviewed evidence, no casual link has been discovered between mobile phone connectivity and a risk to human health. Mobile phones are now ubiquitous throughout our society, and many companies, industries, organisations and individuals rely upon constant connectivity. Mobile communications technology has developed through several generations, and there are now many mobile communication sites, known as base stations, installed throughout the UK, providing services to users of mobile phones and other connected devices, as well as microwave backhaul. 5G purely reflects the next technological generation, which has already brought significant social, economic and environmental benefits to the country. This list is fast growing to include autonomous vehicles, interconnected industrial machinery and robotics used in logistics, medicine, manufacturing, agriculture and healthcare services. In order to prepare the UK for this connectivity revolution, 5G has been being deployed for some years now by the mobile network operators, BTEE, Vodafone, O2 and 3. Initially, the network operators began deploying 5G in cities and towns, as well as along major transport routes, but eventually this will continue to be deployed across the whole of the UK. Radio frequency is a scarce resource, and is highly regulated to ensure efficiency of use and avoid interference between users. The network operators can only use spectrum allocated to them by the government, via Ofcom, the industry regulator. In allowing Spectrum for particular uses, Ofcom has to follow strict internationally agreed standards to allow international use and roaming. To ensure effective use, frequency is generally allocated via auction with conditions to ensure wide geographical coverage and a high quality service. In the UK, the current mobile phone networks operate at frequencies between 700MHz and 3.8GHz. With regard to 5G, Ofcom has designated the following frequencies, which fall into three main categories. Lower frequency spectrum, the 700MHz band, with an emphasis on rural areas as the signal can cover larger distances. Mid frequency spectrum, the 3.4 to 3.8GHz band, for large bandwidths to provide necessary network capacity and enable higher speeds and higher frequency spectrum, the 26GHz band, sometimes known as millimetre wave, providing ultra high capacity but with very small coverage ranges. All these frequencies have been reallocated from previous uses such as terrestrial television broadcasting, defence and satellite communications. So these frequencies are not new and have been in use in many years in wireless communication services across the UK and are now simply reallocated for mobile connectivity. Similar to previous generations of mobile installations, 5G consists of various types of infrastructure necessary to allow the network to operate, including antennas, radio towers and dedicated in-building systems. This is no different to other forms of essential public infrastructure which are now commonplace in our cities, towns and rural areas. You wouldn't believe the amount of high frequency millimetre wave microwaves passing through you all the time from a myriad of other sources aside from the mobile phone networks. 5G networks work in conjunction with existing networks such as 4G but have site specific sighting requirements to reflect the apparatus being used. In many cases, existing macro 3G and 4G mobile base stations were first upgraded to allow for new 5G equipment and service provision. Small cell technology has also become a growing feature of 5G networks, particularly in dense urban areas like cities and towns. Throughout the history of mobile connectivity, there have been concerns raised with regards to the health and safety of these systems. 
A great deal of research has been undertaken throughout the world into the effects of electromagnetic radiation and radio signals, and to date there has been no evidence to indicate that the systems operated so far, and those intended to be operated, have caused any discernible adverse health effects. Over 50 years of scientific research has already been conducted into the possible health effects of radio signal used for mobile phones, base stations and other wireless services, including frequencies that were planned for 5G. The cell companies don't set their own health and safety standard, but rather rely on guidelines covering the safety of radio transmissions, which have been adopted by the UK government, on the advice of Public Health England, which is the statutory advisor on the safety of radio transmissions across all of the UK. Public Health England, or PHG guidance on the health and safety of mobile phone base stations, can be found here and in the link below. This has since been updated to reflect considerations relating to 5G mobile connectivity. Public Health England advises that, and I quote, independent expert groups in the UK and at international level have examined the accumulated body of research evidence. Their conclusions support the view that health effects are unlikely to occur if exposures are below international guideline levels. Remember what I said about current configuration. It is possible that there may be a small increase in overall exposure to radio waves when 5G is added to an existing network or in a new area. However, the overall exposure is expected to remain low relative to guidelines, and as such, there should be no consequences for public health. PHE's main advice about radio waves from mobile phone base stations is that the guidelines of the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection or ICNIRP, should be adopted for limiting public exposure to mobile communication network apparatus. There has been lots of work done on this, but fenced off compounds with masts and tall street monopoles placing antennas and radios high up in the air, well out of the way of the human body, is a big start. The ICNIRP is formally recognised as an official collaborating non-governmental organisation by the World Health Organisation and the International Labour Organisation. It's also consulted by the European Commission. The ICNIRP guidelines apply to frequencies up to 300 GHz and cover exposures arising from new 5G base stations, including millimetre wave technology, as well as from older technologies. It's worth noting that the ICN IRP guidelines were adopted by the UK in 2004 because they contain a greater precautionary factor than the previous UK guidelines by an additional factor of 100%. This was a key part of the UK government's response to the Stewart Report on Mobile Phones and Health, published in 2000, which recommended a precautionary approach. Another key part was the establishment of a research programme that forms a part of the large body of peer-reviewed scientific research that has built up over the last 50 years, and which has not found any casual link with any health effects other than the well-understood thermal effects. It should also be noted that mobile installations are low-powered, typically operating between a few watts to a maximum of 100 watts, depending on the type of installation and whether it hosts one or all of the mobile network operators. Mobile technology also uses adaptive power control to operate at the lowest levels necessary to provide an effective service. Power outputs therefore increase and decrease according to public usage. Mobile installations therefore generally comply with the ICN IRP guidelines by a factor of hundreds and in many cases thousands. The ICNIRP provided a series of frequently asked questions and explained that the new guidelines cover exposures from 5th generation or 5G mobile telecommunications. The new guidelines state that ICNIRP has made a number of changes and will ensure that 5G is not able to cause harm. The ICNIRP guidelines consider both thermal and non-thermal effects of radio frequency electromagnetic fields or RF EMF. ICNIRP considers all potential adverse health effects and sets restrictions to ensure that none occur, regardless of the mechanism of interaction between the exposure and the human body. The lowest exposure levels that can cause adverse health effects are due to thermal mechanisms, and so restrictions have been set based on thermal effects, as these will protect against any other effects that could occur at higher exposure levels. 
In common with previous generations and all forms of electromagnetic communications, 5G installations have health and safety compliance zones where the public are excluded, and these vary depending on base station type, for example macro or small cell, and antenna use and type. The larger antennas usually required on some macro base stations bring particular sighting and design considerations, especially when they're in addition to existing configurations. For example, this may require antennas to be sighted higher off roof level and or for a greater fenced area to keep members of the public out. The key constant to emphasise, however, is that the ICN IRP compliance is retained in all nearby areas accessible to the public, and given the way power outputs drop exponentially, that is likely to remain within a considerable margin. So at this point I'll mention inverse square law. It states that a signal decreases by the square of the distance. For example, if you stand one foot away from a transmitter and get a power measurement of 100 for argument's sake, at two feet away, it'll be 25, and so on. You'll find that your body receives more RF exposure from your actual mobile phone than a cell tower in the local area. Even with a mobile phone next to your head, the design points the signal away from you, and your skin and bone absorb most of it before it reaches the sensitive soft tissues in which cancers are likely to form. In basic terms, they're harmless. Anyway, if for whatever reason existing compliance zones around sites or new ones required due to the introduction of 5G technology can't be created, then the site would be deemed unsuitable. However, as the same frequencies allocated to 5G have been used previously for television broadcasting, defence and satellite purposes, and at significantly higher power outputs, this is not likely to be widespread, as those former uses complied with the same applicable guidelines. Previous generations of mobile phone connectivity have been subject to an Ofcom testing program to assess electromagnetic field or EMF measurements at mobile base station sites. Ofcom has now continued this testing to base stations providing 5G and to date has assessed many 5G sites across UK cities. A link to that report is provided below. Consistent with its testing program for previous generations of mobile connectivity, Ofcom advises that the measured EMF levels from 5G-enabled mobile phone base stations, quote, remains at small fractions of the levels identified in the ICN IRP guidelines, the highest level recorded being approximately 1.5% of the relevant levels. 5G currently contributes a small amount to the EMF levels measured at each location, the ICN IRP guidelines seek to protect against the well-known thermal effects of radio emissions and include a significant precautionary factor. These guidelines apply to all forms of electromagnetic communications and mobile phone technology is one of the lowest powered of these. National planning policy remains clear that provided an application is certified as ICN IRP compliant, then the local authorities should not seek to effectively set different guidelines through the refusal of planning permission. It should also be noted that exposure measurements made by one of PHE's predecessor organisations found that, quote, many exposure measurements have been made in the UK at publicly accessible locations near to base stations, and these have consistently been well within the ICN IRP guideline levels. It continues to monitor the health-related evidence applicable to radio waves, including in relation to base stations, and is committed to updating its advice as required. So, there's your idiot's guide to 5G, and the whole health and safety concern surrounding it. This isn't intended to change anybody's mind, but educate as simply as possible. I'll leave plenty of links to documentation and resources in the description below, and if you're behind these leaflets, then I'd love to speak to you, so drop me an email.